So around early 1992, um, there is a symposium of all of the leading figures in computer science and industry. They gather together and they discuss and they come agree with a standard on how to do message passing across cluster of computer. And by 1994, the first standard on how to do that are defined as MPI-1. And basically, you can see from the three definition, you can see the spirit of message passing in here. The, the primary thing that they define is, they define communicators. How do you realize different processes? How do you group them together? They define how to do point-to-point -point communications. How do you set the standard for one process to talk to a different process? And how do you do collective communications? How can you set up so that one process can talk to multiple processes at once? Uh, by 1998, the second version of MPI standard came out. They start to have one-sided communications. So one process can basically modify things within the memory of another process. They have dynamic process management. You can start creating more processes when you are doing the work and parallel into Apple. How to get multiple processes to read and write from the same data file. And by 2012, we have the third standard of MPI in which we have improved remote access memory, uh, more fault tolerant, more non blocking collective communications, and um, a bunch of more little detail that I don't think is relevant. So, because all of you have the web based browser, I'm going to skip this uh, part on how to set up. Uh, so, with the browser, you don't have to do the initial build set. But in order to enable MPI on Tomato, you still have to do the, the third and the fourth step to add the GCC and add open MPI library. Um, go ahead and modify your last RC file so that uh, this can be done. So let me show you how to do that. So, um, typically, when you are working on Pamento, you would do the module, particularly those of you who attended the software cafeteria also, you know that you need to do the module app to start to add the library that you want to work with on Pamento. Um, you can add, for MPI, you need to add a GCC compiler and you need to add the MPI library. Just type module add. Um, let me do that. So you only need to add the module, uh, the GCC module, and the open MPI module. And basically, you are, uh, your environment is set up to be ready to run MPI. This two, <clears throat> this two step can be automated. If you add that command into your bars RC, so use insert the module load and module add command into your bars RC, this will allow the program to be loaded automatically anytime you log on to Pamito. Yeah. Uh, better? <laughs> if you log into Pamato, this should be in your home directory. So let's say you are here. 
if you type pwd if you are under slash home slash your username that would be where your bus rc file is you just need to type um, vim dot onano bus rc and this will come up your bus rc file will be open Um, the next step is to set up your API for Pi module. So from your terminal, go ahead and type in module F and after that please slash 250. You can, can also add it to the bus RC. And then type pip install dash dash user MPI for Pi. Okay, so switch back to lecture mode. So this is the working of message passing interface in a nutshell. All the processes are launched at the, pro the beginning of program when you run an MPI program. You, uh, you see the syntax later. You need to specify, you need to tell the environment is how many workers that you are using for this program. And it, it will be launched at the beginning of the program execution. Typically, what you want to do is you want to have as many processes as the number of physical core that you have across the entire cluster. So let's say what we request before, we request two allocations, which allocation has eight core. So that means we have a total of 16 cores. So ideally, any time that we launch an MPI program, we launch it with 16 cores. We don't want to launch less than 16 cores because that means we are underutilizing the system. If you are launching more than 16 cores, that means actually some of the processes has to go back into the standard time sharing mode with other processes. And that also creates inefficiency. Um, all processes have their own memory space and they have access to the same source code. So basically, each process will be able to read the same source code that you are using for your program. Individual process ranks are used as a mechanism to enforce execution and exclusion of certain code segments. So basically, let's say I have 16 processes from 0 to 15, all of them would have the same body of code that they can read. But I can put in certain if block, that let's say if this is rank 0, then you do this. And if this is rank 1, then you do that. And that's basically, in a nutshell, how you write MPI code to manage parallelism. Individual process ranks can also be used as a mean to distribute the workload among the individual processes. So let's say I have 10,000 lines of data and I want to divide them among the 10 processes. How do I do that efficiently? Instead of having each processes come up and take 10,000 lines of code, I can say I can just give the index of the data to the processes. And this index is, is calculated based on the process ranks and we'll see how to do that later on. Um, individual processes rely on communication to enforce workflows. So again, this is like you are managing a set of workers and you have to be very explicitly tell the workers what to do. And this is done on point-to-point -point messages, um, collective communication operation and synchronization. So these are the mechanisms that MPI use to uh, facilitate parallelism. So the first item that we look at is the MPI communicator. It defines the group of processes where point-to-point -point and collective communication happens. And it maps the process, the instance of the executing process itself with a certain index. Um, the default global communicator is homework, and the process range start from zero uh, to n minus one for n processes. Um, you can say that why do we need why do we need a global communicator and why we need to define that? Because as you start to work with complex parallel um, problems, you will see that sometimes you actually have multiple communicator communicator group. You can have entire global space where all processes, let's say all of you are Clemson students, and then you can have students belong to the different department and this is different is that within different communicator group, each process is going to have different ranking. So um, that is how um, MPI support and help to support the communication among the processes. <laughs>